Hey, so the first thing we're going to take a look at, um, it's called the survival guide. I broke it up into two parts, and it's kind of like basic algebra stuff, pre-algebra stuff that you probably already learned maybe in seventh or eighth grade. Just kind of a, a refresher because some of the stuff that we do on this, we're going to be we're going to be using these terms pretty much like all year. So let's just kind of go through it and see uh, see if we can fill it. So the first bullet says a blank is a symbol used to represent an unknown quantity. Does anybody know what we call a symbol that represents something that's unknown in algebra? Um, yep, Eric, Eric, do you write Eric? Yeah. Eric, okay, yeah. Variable. Yeah, a variable. So on the blank, where it's, where it's uh, left for you to fill in, you want to fill in the word Variable. So a variable is a symbol used to represent an unknown quantity. So what would be an example of a variable? If it's a symbol used to represent an unknown quantity, what kind of symbol do we use? Yep. X. Yeah, you could use X. Uh, what would be another one? Yeah, uh, Eli? A. A. Yeah, basically any any letter, X and Y are pretty common in algebra, especially when we get into graphing. But any any letter can represent an unknown quantity. There might be certain letters we wouldn't want to use because they could look like something else. Can anybody think of a letter that we might not want to use? Um, Sam? X. Um, X would be okay to use. Um, why do you think it might not be okay? Um. I've been told not to use it before because it looks like a multiplication sign. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. So yeah, um, what we're going to do in algebra, we'll never use an X for multiplication. We'll either use like a dot, I think that comes up in a little bit, or parentheses. Um, but, but yeah, if you're using an X in a class where you use it for multiplication, then it could look like a variable. So yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Um, how about another letter? That you might not want to use, yeah? M. M? How come? Uh, so I used to do um, college homework for one year long. Um, M in college, it would be bad because sometimes in algebra, it was have a minus instead of uh, other things. Okay. We're usually going to see like a little dash when we do subtraction. Uh, we won't use it for, um, for a minus. We're going to see M a lot when we talk about slope. So we do use M, um, but it will just mean like a letter. It will never mean a minus on this. Uh, that's, that's good to know. Um, another letter, like the letter O, why would that not be a good letter? Yeah. Because it could look like a zero. Yeah, that would look like a zero, and I think that one's pretty universal. An O could look like a zero, so we kind of want to stay away from the letter O. Um, well, I just gave you the next one. Uh, so algebraic expression. So on the next bullet where there's two, two blanks, in the first one you're going to fill in algebraic, and in the second one you're going to fill in expression. I was going to ask you that, but I accidentally showed you. So in algebraic expression, it says it contains a variable and one or more operations. So one or more variables and one or more operations. What's an operation in math? Can somebody name like the one that is like four basic ones. Yeah. Uh, is it multiplication? Yeah, multiplication is an operation. Same. Addition. Addition. Eli? Subtraction. Subtraction. Yeah, division. Those are all operations. So if you if you say, let's see what it says. It contains one or more variables. All right, let's pick a variable. X. X. All right, so we got x, and let's pick an operation. Addition. Addition. Okay. And well, when we do addition, we've got to add something to it. So three. Three. Sure. X plus three. That's called an algebraic expression because it has a variable and it has an operation in it. So here's some other other examples. Um, 8x minus 3y, it's kind of like this one. They used two variables, 
but it's okay to use two because it can contain one or more. Uh, this one is kind of similar to the one we did. It's a variable plus a number. Um, this one, where you just have an x. So it might not look like there is an operation there, but there is. Because there's always a number in front of a letter if you don't write it. Does anybody know what number? Isn't it one? Yeah, it's always a one. And if you put a number right in front of a letter, that means it means multiplication. So it's almost like putting a dot there, but you don't need to put the dot. So an algebraic, that is an algebraic expression, just putting a single letter. So those are all just different examples of algebraic expressions. The key is it has to have a letter. A letter makes it algebraic. If you do something like this, that's not algebraic. That's, that's just addition. That's just numeric. There's no letter. All right, let's see if I can ask you the next one without showing it to you. Okay. So it's a little tricky because there's three, three words to it. But it's what you would do is if I gave you something like this, and I said to plug in 4 right there. There's a name for that. It begins with an E. Does anybody know what that's called? Yep, yeah, it's evaluate. Excellent. Evaluate. So evaluate means that you're looking for a number. So if I ask you to evaluate something, I want you to write a number down. So evaluating an expression means you take and you plug in a number for a letter. And then you simplify it as much as you can. So like for this one, if I said to plug in 4 for x, you would put 4 plus 3, and then you would get 7. So that's what evaluate means. So let's try that on our first example. So right below left, the three blanks you just had, there's something that says evaluate. And let's plug in and see if we can do it. Now, this one has two letters. It has two and an X and a Y. Now, we kind of set it up above. When you put something like a number right next to a letter and you don't put any symbols in there, what does that all mean? What operation is happening right there? Multiplication. Yeah, that's multiplication. Okay. So this means if you were going to read it, two times X times y. Now they're giving me a number that they want me to fill in for x. What do they want me to fill in for x? Yeah, um, Zach? Um, two, um, so right next to the two, um, the x there. Yeah, what are we going to fill in for x? Oh, I don't know. Let's see, yeah. Four. Four. So they tell me they want x to equal four. How did they get 4? Well, we don't know. They just picked 4. So you're going to plug in 4 for x. And what are you going to plug in for y? 3. 3. So you're going to fill the 3 in right there for y. All right, so let me write that exactly the way you guys just said. Uh, let me just fix this. Okay. So let's do 2. I'm going to fill in. 4 for x, and I'm going to fill in 3 for y. So is the answer 243? No. 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 Why? What did I, what's, yeah? Because you put in the multiplication. Right. When you put numbers down, you can't just put numbers next to each other like that and have it mean multiplication. So what's one way that we could indicate to somebody this is multiplication? Looks like the number 243 right now. Yeah? You could put dots. Yep. Yeah. So you could put dots in there. Now we know it's multiplication. Uh, what else could we do? Yeah? Little star thing. Um, oh, like an asterisk? Yeah. yeah, a lot of times when you're doing it like on a computer, you do use the asterisk for multiplication. We don't write it as much in algebra, but you definitely do use it on a computer all the time for multiplication. Yep. Yeah. 
You could do parentheses like this. A little more writing to do all parentheses, but you could definitely do it that way. Um, and remember, we're going to stay away from using the x because that might look like a variable and not multiplication. Yeah. Use a variable x for longer. What's that? Use a variable x for longer. So when you have a variable next to the number, we know it means multiplication, but now we don't have any variables. We just have all, all numbers now. So when you have all numbers, your two choices are either to put the dots or put parentheses. And then when we simplify it, we go in order. We'll talk about PEMDAS probably tomorrow or at some point. Maybe today, I don't know. We just go in order from left to right. So we start with 2 times 4, which is, yeah, I'm all, 8. eight. Eight times three, 24. and then eight times three is twenty-four. So that's an example of how you evaluate. Yeah. Wait, you're going to hold left and right Well, it depends on what what you're doing. When you get to uh, the multiplication and division step, we'll have to talk about how you do that. There, there is a left to right involved in that step. But yes, there is the parentheses, exponents, um, and that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, we'll talk more about. Are we gonna get that to. Yeah, actually, we will. So I'll explain that in a little bit. All right, so sometimes what we're gonna have to do is take something that's written as like a, as an algebraic expression and change it to words. How could you read this? What's one way you could pronounce you could pronounce that to me and I would know, oh, you mean this. Yeah? X plus 20. Yeah, you can say plus. That's one word that means to to do that. X plus 28. Yeah. The word 28. Um, what else? You'd have to tell me a little bit more. Because if you just said 28, all I would know is that. But I want to know that whole thing. Yep. 28 more than x. 28 more than x. Yep, so that's that's a good one. So we got more than. Um, you said, what, did, what was the first one you said? x, x plus. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. 28 plus x. What is it? 28 plus x. Okay, if you said 28 plus x with addition, it would mean the same thing if you switch the order. And you may think of another word besides addition. Yep, you could say uh, the like addition with x and 28. And there's another word, what do you call when you add two things together? The sum. The sum. Yep, those are all, all good ones. I think, we, I think we got them all. x plus 28, 28 added to x. I don't know if we said increased by. So I debated it. If you say x increased by 28, that also means to add. Um, I know we said this one, 28 more than x, and I know we said the sum. It's all just different ways of saying add, all those words in bold. Now we're going to look at each operation and then kind of just pick up the words for each one. So the next one has a 42, a little dash, and then an X. Um, what's a word that means to do that dash? You basically can look at all the ones up above and just make them like the opposite for most of them. Um, yes, you still learn names, right? 42 minus X? Yep, you could say 42 minus um, X. Um, what's another word? Yep. 42. Um... No. Wait, come back to me, come back to me. Okay, yeah. Um, 42 subtracted by X. Uh, 42 subtracted by X, yep. Yeah. That's a little little different. We, we don't normally say it that way, but you, but you can. Um, 42, and then you subtract, subtracted by X. Uh, what's another word? I'm thinking of the one that 
not a sum, but what do you call it when you subtract numbers? Yeah? Um, sorry, I've got more notes than these when Okay, what were you going to say? Um, 42 less than x. 42, all right. I like the word less than. X less than 42. Yeah, that one gets a little tricky. We actually have to say it in, in the reverse order. So we'll talk about that. And there's one more word when you call it when you subtract two things. It's the... I was going to say 42 decreased by x. Uh, um, 42 decreased by x, you can definitely say that. Yep. Uh, Anybody know the other word? It's the opposite of sum. It's the... What is that? It begins with a D. The difference, yes. So 42 minus x, I think we said that one. Uh, the, uh, do, 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 the difference, we just said that one. 42 decreased by x, I think we said that one. Now, these ones are a little weird. Because in most of them, the 42 comes first and the x comes second, just the way we wrote it. The 42 comes first, the x comes second. 42 comes first, x comes second. But when you use the word less than, yeah, you gotta be, you gotta be a little careful. Because if I said to you, two less than 10, two less than 10, how would you write that down or type it in on a calculator to figure it out? 2 less than 10. Yeah? 2 minus 10. 10 minus 2. Because if I said, what's, like, if I said somebody is 2 years younger than 10, how would you figure it out? 2 years younger than 10 means to do 10 minus 2. Notice when you said less than, 2 came first and the 10 came second. But when you type it in as a subtraction problem, the order flips. So you have to be careful when you're writing something using the words less than or subtracted. If I said 2 subtracted from 10, it'd be the same thing. If you want to subtract 2 from the number 10, you would type in 10 minus 2. That's how you subtract 2 from 10. So you've got to be careful with the order. Just on the two that I underlined. The other ones are, are okay. Right. How about when we put a number next to a letter? Uh, what's a word we could use to describe that? Yeah. 16 multiplied by x. 16 multiplied by x, yeah. 16 times x. 16 times. So multiply times. Um, Anybody know the word when you multiply two things together? It's not the sum or the difference. It's the... It ends with a P. Yes? Product. Product, yep. And I think, yeah, we got them all. Mr. Hager, can I just introduce myself? Sure. Hey, everyone. I'm Mrs. Watkovich, and I'm just going to help out in here, um, maybe for testing. Um, also, if you have learning support, you might see me in learning support off and on, and I'm here to help, so let me know if you need it, okay? All right. I'll see Thank you. you tomorrow. Thank you. You're welcome. So yeah, a lot of times when we do group work, um, we'll both be available for questions. It's nice, there's only 10 of us, so between the two of us, we should be able to uh, help all of you pretty, pretty well. Thanks. Thank you. So yeah, those are all the words that we use to represent multiplication, times, multiplied by, and product. And then we'll look at the last. So the last one is a fraction. And this bar means to do something. Division. Yeah, division. So what's um, so we can take 18 divided by x. Um, does anybody know the word when you divide two things, what you call it? 
It's not the sum. It's not the difference. It's not the product. It begins with a Q. The quotient. The quotient. And there's not as many ways to say that one. So if we're going to talk about dividing two things, we either say the word divided by or we say quotient. And again, notice for most of them, the 18 comes first, the X comes second. The 18 was first on top, and then the X came second. They're pretty much in the same order that you wrote the problem down. The only one that is tricky is the subtraction. You've got to think about the order a little bit if you're going to use the word subtracted or the word less than. What's that? So we're going to, so then, yeah, we'll be halfway done. We're going to look at the examples, um, and it's going to be writing, taking a sentence, and then writing it um, with numbers and symbols. So the first one. It says the cost of, it's a little tricky, the cost of P pounds of tomatoes. So they know the letter they want us to use in this problem is P. You probably could use T for tomatoes, but they pick well, P for pounds, whatever. So P pounds of tomatoes, and it's 79 cents per pound. So if you bought one pound of tomatoes, how much would it cost you? Yeah, it cost you... One pound times the 79 cents. Now, you don't have to tell me the answer, but just tell me how you'd figure it out. What if you wanted to buy two pounds of tomatoes? You'd have to take the two pounds and multiply by 79 cents. What if you wanted to buy three pounds? Three times 79. So the pattern here is you're doing multiplication. So now, what if you wanted to buy P pounds of tomatoes? P times 79. Yeah, you can write P times 79. Or, what's another way you can write it that looks kind of like one we did up above? 79 with the P next to it. 79 with the P next to it. Both of those are correct. You could do it either way. So if I don't see a word in the sentence that I recognize, like times multiplied by a product, none of those words are in that sentence. Then I just start thinking about it like I did right here. I think, all right, well, what if I bought one pound? How would I do it? What if I bought two pounds? What if I bought three pounds? And then I say, okay, well, what's the pattern? Oh, I'm multiplying to figure it out. Yeah. Um, so like algebraic expressions like this, like do you have to solve for P is or no? No, there's nothing to solve for unless they said you bought 50 pounds of tomatoes. Then you could plug in 50 for P and figure it out. But in this case, when you're writing an algebraic expression, there's nothing to solve for. In fact, you'll always have a letter in the final answer. Okay. No. All right. This one, I definitely recognize a word or maybe a couple words there that mean something. Y years less than X years. What word or couple words there tells you the operation you're doing? Yeah? It's subtraction and it's less than? Yes, we have less than. Now, well, less than means subtraction. So if we're going to look for division, you'd either see the word divided or quotient. So less than, if you go back up, Less than. Now, you've got to be careful. It's opposite. Right, it's opposite. The 42 was first, and the x was second. But when we wrote it, the x is first. Okay, so we got to be careful. So how would we write y years less than x? Yeah? x less x minus y. Yes. And I usually write my y as cursive, just you know, pattern. Yeah. Or you could do the difference between uh, y and x. Yep, so if it said the difference between x and y, that would be another way I could have written that sentence for the example. Yep. And if you ever get stuck, 
I always think of it with numbers. Pretend the X and the Y aren't there. What if it said three years less than, um, actually let's do something like, That. What if it said three years less than 10? I'd say, okay, what is that? Three years less than 10. That means seven. Right? Three years less than 10. So how do I get seven? Do I do 10 minus three? Yeah, I do 10 minus three, and that gives me seven. So if this one comes first, that one comes second. All right, and let's look at the last one. Okay, what, what phrase there tells me what I'm going to do? Okay, this is going to be addition, and increase. it says, yeah, increased by. If you go back up, increased by. X first, 28 second. X first, 28 second. No, no funny stuff with the order. So how would you write X? Increased by 14. About Yeah, perfect. X plus 14. And that's called writing an algebraic expression. Any questions on, on those? Yeah. Um, if you would have solved C, would it equal 15? Well, you'd have to have a little more information. If they said, for example, 30 increased by 14, then we could plug a number in for x. Okay. But with the information we have, we don't know what to plug in for x. Okay. So we just leave it. Okay. Yep. Right. Yes, we do sprints. Sprints? What are sprints? Like, I know sprints in gym class, but what are math sprints? Oh, um, they when you make this time. Oh, like how fast you can do something? Um, I generally don't. Um, in one of my other classes I have, I do. We do these like math minutes. We see how many problems you can do and how fast you can do them. Yeah, I do that in my sophomore math lab class. Um, I haven't done anything with that in here where you're timed how fast you can do it. Um, but it could be something we could try at some point. But I don't, I don't do it a lot. I generally like to make sure people laugh. I don't like you know stress people out. I would never give you a grade on how fast you can do something. Maybe like extra credit, but never never a grade on how fast you can do it. All right. So if you guys flip over to the back, this is where we're going to talk a little bit about the order that you have to do calculations in. Uh, I think I kind of already gave away the word earlier. Um, does anybody remember? Um, it's not, not evaluate. This is a different word that tells us, like when you have addition, subtraction, multiplication, exponents, all in the same problem. PEMDAS. PEMDAS. So when we perform arithmetic calculations, the order of operations that you follow is PEMDAS. And each one of those letters stands for something. Okay. So it basically tells you what order you go in and you solve a problem. Does anybody know what the P stands for? Parentheses. Yep, parentheses. Okay, so parentheses. How about the, the E? Yeah, uh, names, Molly? Exponents. So exponents. Exponents. Um, how about the M? Yep, uh, Sam? Multiplication. Multiplication. And the D, yeah, I did that. Division. We'll talk about that left to right thing in a minute. That kind of got brought up earlier. I'll, I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, and how about the A? Addition. Addition. And how about um, now? Let's see what the S is. 
subtraction? Yeah, fail subtraction. So that's the order that you follow when you have to do multiple things in the same problem. But what do I mean by this left to right? Well, let's say you had eight, so we have eight divided by two times six. That's all multiplication and division. So do you always do m before d? No. You, when it comes to the m and the d, these are like a group, and these are like a group. You do the m and the d in order from left to right, whatever comes first. So what's the first thing you would do here? You do 8 divided by 2, and what does that give you? 4. And now you're left with 4 times 6, which is 24. If you didn't do the division and multiplication in order from left to right, you wouldn't get the same answer. If you did 2 times 6 first, because you said, oh, multiplication is always supposed to be done first. 2 times 6 would give you what? 12. You'd get 12, and then you'd have 8 divided by 12. Is 8 divided by 12 24? No. So when it comes to multiplication and division, we do those in order from left to right. And same thing with addition and subtraction. We go in order from left to right. Okay, so let's see if we can simplify uh, example four as much as we can, and we'll go in order trying to follow PEMDAS. So what's the first thing that we always look for? Parentheses. Parentheses. Do we have them here? Yes. Yes, then we're going to do them. Anything else that's not parentheses, for now, I'm just going to ignore it. So what I'm going to do with the top, I'm just going to copy it. I'll come back to it later. But I see parentheses in the bottom. And what do I have inside the parentheses? Five minus, three. 5 minus 3. And what is 5 minus 3? 2. 2. 2. And how do you read what's in the bottom there? That's 2. 2, two, two squared. Two to the power of 2. You can say 2 to the power of 2, or you, you can also say 2 squared. How about this one? How do you say that one? You can say 2 to the power of 3, or 2 cubed. Um, I should say the two, the two squared, I think you said two squared. Two squared, yep, you can say that. I, which I thought, which I think means um, there's three sides. Like one, there would be one of them, but then two, and then three. So when you have an exponent of two or three, those are the couple that have special names. You can say squared or cubed. If the exponent is anything higher than that, like 2 to the 5th, there's no special name for that. We just say 2 to the 5th. But these ones, you could either say 2 cubed or 2 to the 3rd. I usually say cubed, just the way I say it. All right, so now we don't have any parentheses left. Uh, what's the next thing we look for on that PEMDAS? Exponents. I got all kinds of exponents. I got a lot of them to do. I got three different ones, and we'll do each one um, separate. 2 to the third power, what does that mean? I mean, I know it means 2 cubed, but what does 2 cubed mean? Yeah. Um, 2 to the 3 times? 2, like... So, like, 2 plus 2 plus 2? Plus okay, so I like... Multiply. Yeah, multiply. We're going to use 2 3 times, but we're going to multiply. 2 times 2 times 2. And what is 2 times 2 times 2? Right? 8. 8. That's the first one. And the next one is 4 squared. That means 4 times 4. Yep. 16. Yep, that's 16. That's an 8. So we have 8 plus 16, and the bottom, uh, 2 squared. What does that mean? Sam? 
Um, it means two times two, so that's four. So that's four, yep. Okay, now, when we have a fraction bar, it's a little, little kind of weird here, but when we have a fraction, what we do is we simplify what you can in the top and then in the bottom. Well, there's nothing to simplify in the bottom. So we have to simplify what's in the top first. Yeah. So what do you get when you simplify what's in the top? Yeah. 24. Yep, you get 24. So I know that kind of goes a little out of order of, of what you think PEMDAS is, but whenever you have a fraction bar, once you get to this step, you have to simplify what you can in the top of the fraction and then the bottom of the fraction. In the bottom, there's nothing. So now, our last step, we have division. What's 24 divided by 4? 6. Six. Yep. Any questions on that? Let's try, try one more that's kind of similar to that. Except this one says evaluate. Okay, so remember what evaluate means. Take the number that they give you and plug it in for the letter. Okay, what, what value are they giving me here? What's the value they give me? that they want me to plug in. Four. Yeah, they give me a four, and they want me to fill it in for what letter? Uh, X. Yeah, fill it in for X. So you're gonna take the four, you're gonna put it right there, and you take the four, and put it right there. Now, remember what we said about putting a number right next to another number? It's gotta mean multiplication, so we can't just write two, four. You gotta put a dot, or we gotta, we gotta do something. So how would I write this once I fill in the 4? Yeah? To uh, so multiply 4 times 3. Uh, can you, so go ahead and tell me tell me how I would write it first. Oh, uh, 3 and 4, dot. Okay, we'll put a dot, I like that. Yeah, and then you do equals 12. Uh, we still got some more stuff we want to write down first. Oh, so then you put like squared? Squared, okay. Okay, you could put parentheses around the four if you want, but because you put the dot there, you don't need to do both. Okay. You could do one or the other, but either one would be correct. Okay, minus two and four. Multiply. Yep. So you could put the dot or you could plus put the parentheses and then plus one. So now this is similar to the problem we just did. You have to follow PEMDAS but we had to fill the numbers in first. Okay. Um, do we have any parentheses in this one? Uh, nope, no parentheses. Um, do we have any exponents? Yes. Yeah. What number has an exponent? Four. 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 Just the four. So the three, I'm gonna stay right there. Um, four to the second power, uh, how about Carlos, what does that give me? 16. 16, good. So we're going to get 16. And for now, I'll just copy everything else until we get to it. All right, so we get our exponents. Uh, next thing we look for, multiplication and division. Uh, any multiplication or division? Three times 16. Yeah, we've got three times 16. So if we need a calculator, you'll be able to use one uh, on the test, so we can just do 3 times 16, gives us 48. Uh, I still see some more multiplication we can handle. 2 times 4 is going to give me 8. Now I kind of ran out of space there, so I'm just going to move up over here. 48 minus 8 plus 1. So, yep, first thing we do is remember addition and subtraction. You do them in order from left to right. So, what's the first thing you do here? 48 minus 8. 48 minus 8. 
And now we still have to do the plus one, and that gives me 41. Okay, so anytime you see evaluate, it means we're going to look for a number as the answer. Doing yep. Yeah, we don't spend a lot of time. This is kind of review stuff today and tomorrow, but yeah. I got 39. You got 39? Oh. And so did you get to this step right here? Oh, I see where we are. Oh, you see where you're going yeah. on? I added, I, I added 9, and it says 48 minus 9. Oh, okay, yeah. Make sure 48 minus 8. Yeah. And that gives you 40, and then plus 1. All right, another property we're going to use a lot this year is called the distributive property. Has anybody heard of that before, distributive property? Mm -hmm. Can anybody tell me, like, what, what does it mean or kind of how do you do it? I see some people kind of going like this, like drawing these, like, like these lines like this. Yeah? It means where you would have parentheses and number outside on the left, and then you would, and you would multiply each number by it. So yeah. If you would have four on the outside and two and two on the inside, it would be... Exactly. So when you, the whole key for this is it's all about multiplication. And it's usually when you have a number and you have to have parentheses. That's what makes it distributive property. Now, the number could be in front of the parentheses. That, that's where we normally like to see it. Or it could be after the parentheses. So here's an example of what distributive property looks like. We have a number on the outside. In this case, we have a 7. Specifically, it is in front of the parentheses. If it was behind the parentheses, it would look like this. That would mean exactly the same thing as this problem. And each term is multiplied. And I saw some people kind of drawing it out. A lot of times, that is how we do it. We draw it like those two curves meaning to multiply the 7 to each thing that's inside. So the 7 gets multiplied to the 8, and the 7 gets multiplied to the 5. Now, at the end here, I put the sign to the left is attached to the term. Okay, what I mean by that is if you had something like this, when you do the distributive property, on this one, you're not distributing a 3. You're really distributing a what? Negative 3. It's a negative 3. The sign to the left is attached. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll circle it. So we remember that we're taking the negative and 3 and distributing it to both. Now when you just have a number like a 7, you could almost think of it as like there's a positive there. There's really nothing attached. It's just a plus sign. Okay, so let's try this one. So if I want to do distributive property, the first thing I would do is multiply 7 by what? 8. Yep, I'm just going to write that down. So 7 times 8. And then I'm also going to do 7 times 5. But now I need to do something with those two. What are we doing with once we do seven times eight and seven times five? We're gonna we're gonna add them because it says addition right there. It could be either addition or subtraction. Those are the two things you would see with distributive property. Uh, yeah. I see right now is seven point eight plus seven point five. Is that correct? Um, so you want to make sure. So hopefully. Make sure your multiplication sign looks good. That is one downside to using the, the dot, is it can look like a decimal point. So if you want to be really clear, you can make it a little bigger. Or if you go like that, then there's no question that I mean 7 times 8 and now 7 times 5, if I use parentheses. Um, and I heard somebody earlier say what that was. 56. 56. And 35, and again, you can use your calculator if you're not sure. Uh, but what does that add up to? 91. 91, yep, I think so. 56 plus 35 gives me 91. Okay, 
So we'll do distributed property a lot this year. Sometimes it'll be numbers, sometimes it'll be letters. Um, it just depends on the volume. Okay. Any questions on that? All right, so now we're at the, the very last thing. We might be pretty close to finishing it, but I don't, I'm not too worried. If we don't, we'll finish it uh, tomorrow. All right, so I think you guys already have this written, the 7x plus 13 plus 18? Yeah. Okay, so that has three parts to it. It has this part, this part, and this part. Does anybody know what you call those three parts? It begins with a, with a T. And if you look at your notes, you might get kind of a hint. Yeah, they're called terms. So on the blank line where it says parts of an expression that are connected with addition and subtraction are called terms. So like if I did something like two, uh, it's so like two x plus five. There's two terms there, this part and this part. Basically, everywhere you see an addition sign or a subtraction sign, that breaks it into a new term. So if I did this, uh, 8x, how many terms are there? Just one. There's only one. Just 8x. There's two things there, but they're not terms. Okay. Um, does anybody know what you call... A like term? Uh, we're going to talk about like terms maybe today, maybe tomorrow. But does anybody know what we call the number in front of the letter? Coefficient. Yep, coefficient. Um, it's also called a... Um, actually, no, you're right. The number in front is a coefficient. I meant to draw it to this one. That number on the end is called a constant term. It's called a constant term because it doesn't have a letter in it. If something has a letter, what did you say the very first thing? If it's a letter, that's called a... Yeah? Coefficient? Um, not a coefficient. Coefficient has to be a number. But a letter is a... In the algebra, we call it a, a variable. The word variable means change. It can change. Right? Constant means never changes. Like if you constantly get 90s on every test, constant means your grade never changes. You get the same grade. Anything that's a number is called a constant because it doesn't change. So 18 would be a constant. 18 is a constant. 6 is a constant. 4.2. Anything that's a number is a constant. If, it put, if you put a letter in it, now it's a variable. So... The term that, um, that Eric said earlier, he said, well, you could call it a constant or a constant term. Yeah, either one. So this is a constant or a constant term. How about this? Would that be a constant term? No. No, because it has something that can change it. It has a variable. So anything with a letter, not a constant. So on the line where it says 18 is a, and there's two blanks, you can fill in constant term. And then the last blank, we can just say constant. Okay, so I think we'll finish up with like terms. Uh, I'm going to save non-like terms for tomorrow. Probably won't take another minute or two, but let, let's stop with like terms. Okay, so where it says like terms, if you have a blank, you want to fill in what's underlined. So it says like terms. Have the same variable and the same exponent attached to that variable. In fact, I can even shorten that. You probably already wrote down the part I would shorten. I'm just going to shorten it to this. 
Like, if you wrote what was there before, that's okay. But that's even shorter. Like terms have the same variable and the same exponent attached. So same variable, and if they have an exponent, same exponent attached. Here's an example of like terms. 2x, 4x, same variable, 2x, 4x. How about if I did 3y? Could somebody give me another term? Like means similar, that's what it means. So I'm looking for one that's similar to 3y. Yeah? 6y. 6y. Those are like terms, they're similar terms. Five x squared. Anyone think they could give me one that looks like that? Doesn't have to be exactly the same. I mean, it could be the same. Eight x squared. Yep. They have the same letter, and they have the same number attached, squared and squared. They look similar. That's what like terms mean. Two x. Why? Anyone think they could give me a like term that looks like that one? It's uh, 3, 3 times y. 3 So it has to have the same variables and the same exponents, yeah? 3xy? 3xy, yep. Those are also like terms. Do one more. Let's try four y cubed. Can somebody give me a like term with four y cubed? Yep. Twelve y cubed. Sure. Twelve y cubed. Those are like terms. Same letter and the same exponent attached. How about if I wrote five x squared? and 4x cubed. Are those like terms? Those aren't like terms, but they have the same letter. X and X. But the power changes. If they have an exponent, it's supposed to be the same exponent. It's not supposed to be different. So that's, we'll pick up with that tomorrow, but that's an example of non terms. All right, so we have, yeah, we had a Two more minutes, we would have finished, but I'm gonna I'm gonna hold off there. Um, so for tonight, um, the homework is gonna be the survival guide, part one, and that's on Schoology. Does anybody have any questions on where to find it? Uh, so what if you're finished? If you finish the survival guide, just bring it in tomorrow. You finish, I'll check it tomorrow. So the survival guide, that's a worksheet that's on online. So you're gonna go to guided notes, homework, click survival guide part one, and then where it says survival guide homework, click that and click view. So this is the homework for tomorrow. Okay, just to try try these problems. Okay. If we get to one, to do, oh, part two is on the back. I think part two is actually tomorrow. So do as much as you can. Um, I would say at least try to get up to number nine. That's about what we covered. So if you can get up to number nine, you're good. I'm probably going to assign the rest from 10 on tomorrow. But try to get to at least number nine. If, if you finish the whole thing, then you'll be a little bit ahead. But if not, at least get to number nine. What, what, what is the worksheet called? Um, survival guide, I think part one. Okay. Part two, I'll give you tomorrow. Yeah, I'll check it right at the beginning of class.